Hello, I'm your accounting coach, um, Michael Sakala. Today I'll be focusing on the concept of time value of money. All right, I've got a few computations that I'm going to do, but before that, uh, let me begin by explaining the concept itself. The concept of time value of money uh, suggests that uh, money today, given the same amount, is more worthy than money in the future. Meaning that money today has got more value than money in the future, given the same amount. What I mean by saying the same amount is um, a ten thousand dollars today is more worthy than a ten thousand dollars in one year's time, two years time, or three years time. Okay? Why is it so? It's because of these three major factors that I'm going to explain to you. Number one, um, that the aspect of uh, inflation. If I'm given $10,000 today, I can do more with that amount than in two years' time because the prices of goods and services will have gone up. The other factor is that of uh, risk. There is risk involved. Uh, there are so many unforeseen circumstances that can happen uh, between now and probably two years' time. So I would rather have the money today. The other one, which is basically uh, highly high rights to the uh, price of money, that of interest aspect, is the aspect of lost opportunity, or rather what you might call as the opportunity cost. The lost opportunity uh, to invest. If I'm given $10,000 today, I can invest it right now, and it will have, it will have earned some interest uh, for some time, say maybe in one year's time, two years' time, and something like that. So I would rather have the $10,000 today than have it in one year's time. That's basically the explanation about uh, the concept of time value of money. Now let's get into um, an illustration by looking at uh, an example which I'm going to read uh, for you on the board and then uh, we'll solve it to uh, make this explanation more clear. All right, here is my example. Joshua is supposed to receive a 2,100 in two years' time, not today, in two years' time from his trust fund, but due to an emergence, he wishes to receive the money today. If interest rate is 10%, how much should he be given? That's a question. What do you think? Should he be given more? Should he be given less? According to the explanation that we have, uh, we have given, I think Joshua should be given less than 2,100. Because this amount, he was expecting it in two years' time. But he wants it today. So if his trust fund, they are going to give him uh, a 2,100 today, meaning they've given him more money. Because what the 2,100 is going to do today, it's going to do more than what the 2,100 uh, will be doing in two years' time. Okay, so uh, what we need to do here is to find out how much should be uh, how much should Joshua be given today, which is equivalent to a twelve thousand one hundred, and that is going to be a less amount than twelve thousand one hundred, because if he's given twelve thousand one hundred, it simply means that he has actually collected more um, than he would have collected in two years' time. So let's find that amount, and that amount is basically what we are saying uh, should be the amount that uh, somebody today at a prevailing interest rate of 10% can invest at a compounding interest rate, it will grow to 12,100 in two years' time. So we are looking at the amount which can be invested today at 10%, and then grows to 12,100 in two years' time. Why 10%? The assumption is that 10% has already factored in the aspect of risk, the aspect of uh, inflation and um, also just the lost opportunity itself to, to invest. So everything has been factored in in this percentage. So the prevailing uh, interest rate basically reflects inflation and risk. All right. So let's move on and calculate uh, that amount. This amount which is supposed to receive in two years' time, we shall call it the future value. The amount that is supposed to receive today, we shall call it the present value. Okay, so now what we are calculating is the present value. For us to get the present value, 
what we're basically going to do is we are going to discount the future value. We are going to discount the future value. So we are calling this process as uh, discounting. Okay, discounting, we need a discount factor, and the discount factor is basically 1 plus R raised to the power negative N. Alright? Negative N meaning we are rewinding time. We are getting something which is here in the future to bring it into the present. Okay, so uh, when we multiply the future value uh, with the discount factor, we obtain the present value. So now we go, we we'll start. Present value is equal to the future value that we are supposed to multiply with the discount factor to give us the present value. So there we go. We have 2,100 here. And then the rate is 0 0.1, where there is error there, I'm putting rate. N is simply the number of years, I'll put negative 2. So I'll punt this the way it's appearing on the calculator. The calculator has the brackets. So I have 2,100 open brackets, 1 plus uh, 0.1, close brackets, uh, raised to the power, negative 2, close brackets. And then I say uh, equal to, and then I obtain uh, 10,000 kwacha. All right. So what this uh, implies is that uh, Joshua should be given a 10,000 kwacha today. And in other ways, I can simply say a 10,000 kwacha today is equivalent to a 2,100 in two years' time. In simple terms, I'm simply saying uh, what a 10,000 kwacha is capable of doing today is what most likely the 2,100 will be doing in two years' time in terms of value. All right? So, <clears throat> if I was to reverse this process, which I've discussed, I call this discounting. I can reverse it by compounding. Compounding, I'm basically finding the future value of a present value. Okay? So, compounding is the opposite of discounting. So, if I'm compounding, um, the compound factor is basically 1 plus R raised to the power positive A, which is number of years. So we are going forward, it's positive. Here we are coming backward, it was negative. So now, what I'm basically doing is, I'm finding the future value. So if I'm finding the future value, I'm basically going to compound the uh, present value, meaning um, this amount will be any interest at uh, a compound um, assumption. All right? So this will be that, and then that, and then that. And then what I have as the present value is 10,000. I'm just reversing to indicate or to show what I've basically done. So 10,000 there, and then 1 plus 0 0.1 raised to power 2. So if I'm reversing, I'm compounding. If I'm getting something in the present, I want to see how much it will be in the future, or if somebody invested something now, how much it will be, we will compound. But if uh, we are getting the future amount, we want to know how much is its value in the now, we are calling that discounting, which is calculating the present value. But if we are getting something today, which we want to know its value in the future, we are compounding and we shall call that as future value. Okay, so 10,000 here. Uh, I've already done that. Let me just press this on the calculator. 10,000 there, and then open brackets, 1 plus 0 0.1 raised to the power 2. I have 2,100. So I've reversed the present value into the future value. Uh, but my main point was basically explaining how we find the present value given the future value by the process of what? Discounting. Thank you so very much. I hope uh, you enjoyed the tutorial.